Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the campus tour of the Imperial College London South Kensington campus with Devify himself. First things first, you're probably wondering why I'm dressed up like an estate agent in the thumbnail of the video, like I'm about to sell you some university buildings, but I promise you I was just filming a standard corporate video for a big pharma company. Hey everyone, my name's Dev and I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College London. Welcome to my channel. I make videos about student lifestyle, medicine, Imperial and tech. And so if any of that floats your boat, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below. Now just a little disclaimer before we do get started, all of the footage captured below was not during the lockdown, so make sure you follow the government guidance and stay safe. And strap yourselves in, let's jump straight into the video. Let's kick off at South Kensington Station. Once you step outside, you're greeted by loads of shops and restaurants, such as Leon, Five Guys, Honest Burgers and Chopsticks. There's some great food places to explore in South Kensington, and so if you're a foodie and you've got the cash, then it's definitely worth checking out. South Kensington is on the Circle, the District and the Piccadilly Line, so it's really well connected to a lot of places in London. South Ken is also one of the two closest stations that you'll be using to get into Imperial, with the other one being Gloucester Road. If we keep walking forward for a few minutes, we come across the Victorian Albert Museum, looking all nice and historic. The Victorian Albert Museum is the world's leading museum of art and design, housing a permanent collection of over 2.3 million objects, a span over 5,000 years of human creativity. And as an Imperial student, you have the unique privilege of having an object that you create during your time at Imperial to be displayed in this museum. You know what's funny that I was trying to get some cool shots of the uh, the museum using some cool futuristic angles and stuff just for you guys and this lady who works there came up to me and started questioning like what are you doing and like do I need any help um, you know I was like yeah, I'm just trying to get some b-roll you know you know what I'm saying and then she's like nah um, do you want to queue up and come inside and I'm like no just let me film my YouTube video. On your left is the National History Museum. Whilst it is quite well renowned for its history, something that is not well known for is its banter. During the winter time, the outside of the museum actually becomes an ice skating rink, which is a great place to go and explore with your friends, have some fun, socialize a little bit, and you can even learn to ice skate as well as I can. Usually the accommodation halls do an ice skating event once a year where you kind of just go socialize and get to know who you're living with. Um, each hall does it separately so it's not like too many people and all that. If you guys want to know what accommodation halls to apply to though, what are the good ones, what are the bad ones and real experiences from students, the juicy stuff, so where you should apply to, then make sure you go check out the video which I'll link in the description down below. It gives you sort of all the facts, figures, pricing and everything. So it's a complete accommodation guide. If you walk a little bit further towards the uni then you come across yep you guessed it another museum this one is a science museum and has some pretty interesting exhibitions not gonna lie I went a couple of times and well it was interesting across the road is also a church and I'm gonna be honest with you guys you're probably gonna be approached by by some people from the church asking you to donate blood or become a Christian and all that I've been stopped way too many times to count uh, it's just a it's just an occurrence that happens you gotta get used to it I guess and now we reach the main entrance of the university in my b-roll I have somehow jumped to the other side of the road so I'm um, I'm going to cross the road safely back uh, and then you will be greeted by the iconic PET scan of the brain. On your right is the business school. The business school was recently opened in 2004 by the Queen herself. Unfortunately though, apart from the uh, integrated BSCs that the, they offer, all the other courses that the business school offers are actually only postgraduates. Once you go past the reception, you enter into Dalby Court, which contains entrances to the Pink Bessemer building, where subjects like bioengineering are taught, the electronic and electrical engineering building, and the blue faculty building, home to, well, the faculty. However, we're going to take a little left down the ramp, which leads us to the Queen's Tower. When doing the campus tour in real life, this is the point where I actually start asking all the engagement questions, you know, just to engage the audience, like how tall do they think the Queen's Tower is, how many steps do they think it has, and then they start guessing, and then they have like a little competition between each other, and then I have a little competition with them, and then that's how I score all my sort of highly on my engagement rating um, in my campus tours. What, what did I just say? I don't make any sense. Okay, but I, I basically ask questions. Like, just, you know, just to engage them. That's what I wanted to say, okay? I asked them in engaging questions, okay? Just to keep them sort of listening to me and, and respect me a little bit more. Turning left and walking forward leads us onto the Sir Alexander Fleming Building, also known as SAF, which is the hub to all medics and biomedics. This is another part of the tour where I ask my engaging questions, like who was Sir Alexander Fleming? Usually there's a clever clog, someone who knows um, sort of who it is, but um, sometimes they don't. This is the time where I sort of flex my knowledge and I'm like, yeah, he discovered penicillin and they're like, wow, what's penicillin? And I get into a little conversation about that. 
If we flip ourselves around 180 degrees, we can see the Skempton building, home to courses like civil and environmental engineering. I believe the building was named after Sir Alex Skempton, who was an English civil engineer and a professor of soil mechanics at Imperial College London. Um, I think he was also one of the founding fathers of soil mechanics in the UK and is regarded as one of the most sort of important engineers of the 20th century. Further along the road is the chemistry block and the recently renovated Dyson building, home to design engineering. Or if you're an Imperial student, I think they like to call it Desang. Doesn't really help the, the reputation, does it? Design engineering is all about bridging the gap between traditional engineering and design to create innovative solutions to modern challenges, from improving passenger comfort on commercial airlines to designing next generation sports prosthesis. Sounds pretty cool, not gonna lie. Although coming to this end of the campus does uh, kind of screw over the campus tour a little bit. So we're just going to rewind a little bit. Uh, whilst we're rewinding, I would love it if you guys are enjoying the video so far. Make sure you drop a like down below and comment to let me know that you're loving it. it only takes a second or two, but it really helps the channel out. Now, if you start heading the other direction, you can see the beautiful Queen's Lawn. When the sun comes out, not only is it a great time for the guns to come out, but also Imperial students. They love to sit there, just chill, socialise, have a little picnic, have some food, you know. It's all a bit of fun and just a chill environment in general. There's also a farmer's market every Tuesday with some great tasty food available at a really decent price. Continuing down a little walk comes the library with the infamous Library Cafe. This is the time where I sort of talk about the numerous cafes that Imperial has on its campus, the student discounts available and how good the library is. Now the library does have its few downsides, which I do mention in the uh, things I dislike about Imperial video. If you guys haven't checked that out, obviously go check that out after watching this video, of course. But objectively speaking, it's not really that bad. It's got five floors, uh, loads of computers, loads of books, um, whiteboards, communal study spaces, conference rooms. Like it's a decent library. It's just that sometimes it gets a bit packed. Okay, gets packed a lot of the time, fine. Moving to the Sherfield building, houses a lot of students, loads of students will come here for the lectures and stuff, there's a great hall, and there's multiple other lecture theatres, there's sort of the common rooms there, the junior senior common room, there's loads of cafes as well, um, so it's a huge place with a lot of, lot of stuff in there. Once you exit out of the top floor of this building, you've got the Sherfield walkway. On the left is Huxley, which I'll go to in a second, but on the right is the main walkway. This kind of goes alongside Sherfield and so it shares entrances to the common room and the cafes. But the walkway also has Amazon lockers to get your deliveries, a merch shop that has Peng Imperial merch to flex on UCL with, and even a little Santander bank. The walkway then opens out into Dalby Court. But obviously again, the coming here kind of kind of messes up a little tour. We're gonna go, we're gonna go back. Uh, instead of going right onto the Sherfield walkway, we're gonna go left towards Huxley. Huxley is the home to the computer science and maths department, I believe. You head outside and now you're outside onto the main road. And on your left, you will see the countless embassies in South Kensington. It's a very safe area to live in. Parents, I don't know if you're watching, I don't know why parents will be watching anyway, but it's a safe area for your kids. You know, if you're sending them there, just don't, don't worry about it. If you have the opportunity to, just sort of take the opportunity and live there. It's a once in a lifetime thing. There's also some Santander bikes, uh, you know, if you like biking and the infamous uh, bike rack where, where bikes are racked. When you get to the corner, we turn right onto Prince Consort Road where on the right is Beckett, which is the physics block. And if you're expecting any sort of physics facts, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I don't have any again. Prince Consort Road also has Bite Hall, which is one of Imperial's accommodation halls. Now, I did make a video on this talking about my experience. This is where I stayed during year one. And I talk about sort of the pros, the cons of living there. I also showed you guys sort of a, a room tour and a kitchen tour of Bite Hall, but it's not actually in the Bite video. It's in the complete halls guide video. I just felt the need to share it at a later date, not before. Confusing, but Check out both videos basically if you want to see it. Going into Byte Hall, we have the Byte Quadrangle. Byte houses around 300 students and is a great place to stay if you're over 18. Under 18 simply can't stay there due to the bar and the club. Now, this is another one of those times where I start my engaging questions or where I'm like, um, any idea where the bar is called 568? Usually they don't know. In fact, they never know. <laughs> it's called 568 because there's 568 milliliters in a pint. <clears throat> and then I ask about sort of why is the club called metric? Again, they, they literally have no idea why it's called metric. Um, and then I tell them it's a play on sort of the imperial and metric system. And that's how it came to be. Um, at least that, that's what I think it is. The people I'm giving the campus tour to are under 18. So they shouldn't really know about the alcohol in the first place. The bike quadrangle also houses the Imperial Student Union. These are the people that sort of bridge the gap between the students and the, um, the staff. 
and make things flow smoothly and they're involved in a lot of the decisions that go on about the university. Coming out of Bight Hall across the road is the Royal College of Music which is not part of Imperial but they do do some kind of joint degrees like music and physics stuff like that. Across the road to that is the Royal Albert Hall. Royal Albert Hall is one of the, the coolest things I think of living sort of in the South Kensington campus uh, by far. Uh, Royal Albert Hall hosts a variety of different things from music performances to graduations um, to even wrestling. In year one I met one of my school teachers outside of the Royal Albert Hall, from my hometown by the way, not from London or anything, and he was there to see the wrestling. Anyways, um, the Royal Albert Hall also hosts loads of premieres, and this is where it gets absolutely mental. If you live facing the street, um, in by if you face the street like I did, or if you live sort of facing the Royal Albert Hall, you have like red carpets right outside your room. During my time here at Bay, I think they hosted um, Murder at the Orient Express, which had I think Johnny Depp in it, um, there was also Star Wars movie and the BAFTAs, essentially the British Oscars. It's a big event and so you get loads of like sort of big name actors, actresses um, and even the royal family that pops down quite often. And sometimes you're even allowed on the red carpet. Walking a little bit further brings up the Royal School of Mines, uh, one of the more traditional looking buildings in the entire sort of uh, Imperial's campus, um, but still it looks absolutely stunning. It is home to geography, I mean uh, geology and geophysics, and if you keep walking through the building, uh, you actually end up into Dalby Court by the pink Bessemer building where there's bioengineering and all that, which I showed you guys earlier on. If you keep walking straight um, past the Royal School of Mines, you cross the dangerous road that is Exhibition Road. Once you've done so, you come across um, Ethos. Ethos is Imperial's gym, and it is a fascinating gym in the sense that it's so affordable. It's only £40 a year. £40 a year, right? Whereas most gyms are like £30, £40 a month. So the price is absolutely stunning. And the gym is constantly being renovated. There is the activity hall with a climbing wall. There is the swimming pool and there's the gym, which has now been uh, moved down as well. It's on two floors instead of one. So if we look across the road to Ethos, we have Princess Garden, which is a nice, cool, cute looking square garden where there's some like events we do like Holy as well. Once once a year, they, they celebrate Holy there, but it's just a nice place. It's surrounded by obviously Ethos, East Side, South Side, a GP, um, a dentist and an essential grocery shop. Uh, it's a bit small, but it's still there. So essentially you've got like everything on this campus. That's about it for the campus tour. I hope you guys did enjoy it and I hope it didn't take up too much of your time. I tried to be as quick as I could and show you guys what it was like. If you did enjoy, make sure you drop a like down below and comment saying you loved it. I'm out of breath. <laughs> I've been Devify and I'm out.